Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for another very special edition of Diary of a Double. This is a year-long journey of Antonio Aguelas to swim from France, from England to France, and then from France to England. That's 67 kilometers in cold tidal waters. Um, now, Antonio is also the two-time World Open Water Swimming Man of the Year. Um, and the way WOWZA, which is the World Open Water Swimming Association, that's our acronym. The way WOWZA uh, nominates and selects um, people of the year, man of the year, woman of the year, performance of the year, and offering of the year is not necessarily for the fastest swimmer or the best swimmer, however way you define it. It's actually for someone who is very influential who makes a giant impact on our swimming community. And today we're gonna to do a, instead of asking Antonio what he did last week in preparing for his 67 kilometer two-way crossing of the English Channel, because we're in the middle of the WOWS Awards, and you can vote at www.openwaterswimming.com. We're gonna ask Antonio to Tell us about his life journey from the time he was a young teenager in Mexico City uh, all the way to Stanford to where he is today. So welcome, Antonio. Muy buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Uh, wherever you are, it's a pleasure being here with you all um, this uh, Saturday. You know, Stephen, I totally agree what you said, but at the end, I have to tell you what I did this week. Because okay. it's very important. So I can't, you know, I, I, I did, that's why I'm wearing my vest today and I'm very cold. So I have to tell you what I did. Okay. But anyway, how, how shall I start? Um, well, t tell us what you did and why you're cold. Well, you know, every week brings a surprise. So last week I had a off week. And then on Monday, Rafa sends me my workout. And believe it or not, the first day I have to do speed work which, you know, I'm not very fond of because, uh, you know, he always puts me in these times. So my, R, my R4 had been around 134, 135, and I had to do 1200s and 1250s in my R4. And believe it or not, I did them all, all of the hundreds, all under 130, okay. around 128, and the, and the 50s all around 142, no, 143, five, four, 143, 143, 142, and 141. And the last one in 39 seconds, Stephen. I know after we talked to Maria Luisa last week, that's, uh, that's not very fast since she did uh, uh, 110 or 111 in one 100 the other day, but that's, I'm very happy about that. And then, as you mentioned on Tuesday in the, in the interview that you did uh, with, uh, with Katia for the Mexican newspapers, um, which I encourage all the um, all the nominees to find your local newspaper or your national newspaper to to write an article. You, you mentioned that we open water swimmers always find a way to keep on doing what we want. Yes. And as you know, California is closed. Yeah. So on Tuesday, I get an email from my hotel where I was going to stay, and they said, "Look, Mr. Yeah, Koyet, that's you're that's very that's happy." That's we're very happy that you, you're going to be here. But the state of California has just imposed this law. And anybody out of state has to uh, fill these two criteria. And we don't think you filled any one of them. One of them was to have to be in quarantine in the hotel, in my room for 10 days before I could go out. So I didn't have, I won't have anywhere to swim in cold water on, uh, on, uh, on this month. So I was a little depressed. And then something came to my mind. Remember I told you and Quinn that I was doing a project for the police university in Mexico City? Yes. And guess what? They have a 50 meter pool. And since they want the policemen to be very tough, <laughs> they don't heat the pool. <laughs> so the pool is at 60 degrees. Oh. Oh. That a beauty? That's a beauty. That's a beauty. That's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. So... I went on Wednesday and I jumped in. I didn't know how cold it was and it was 60 degrees. And then today I did 10 800s. Really? At 
60 degrees. Wow. So, so, so just so people know, 60 degrees Fahrenheit is, a, is a, about 15 and a half degrees Celsius. Now, you may think uh, 15, 16 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit is not so cold. However, when that temperature water is fresh and when it's in a pool, it's probably the equivalent of 12 or 13 degrees or 52 to 55 degrees in the ocean. Well, that makes me very happy, Stephen, because I was very cold, very cold. I mean, around six or seven, um, Don Julian had to come in, had to come in and tell me, Antonio, you can't stop. Even if Rafa is not on deck, you can't stop. So I didn't stop. And today, as you can see, I'm drinking to myself because I did a very great workout. <laughs> That's amazing, Antonio. Hey, let me interject with a technical question for Stephen. Um, why is it that fresh water feels colder? Uh, because our cell, our body includes a lot of salt content naturally. And so when the, the human body is engulfed in, in uh, uh, salt water in the ocean and our body, the, the, the mineral content in our, in our body is also salt, it actually is, is closer to us on a cellular level. Now, when you go in a chlorinated pool with fresh water, that water is not the same or nearly the same content as, as, this, as cellular uh, we call interstitial fluid in our bodies. So the differential is greater and therefore you feel colder. Well, that you have now made my day double. You doubled my day because now I know I swam around 13 degrees and that makes me even more happy. You know, yeah. maybe I can be with like Quinn pretty soon and do, a, a, do an ice mile. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, I was, as I was saying, I was doing my, I'm doing my audio book. Um, I, I'm reading my book in Spanish. Hopefully, it'll be in English pretty soon. Um, and um, and it's really interesting to to go back into time. And um, the book, as you know, follows my life. And um, I started swimming uh, competitively because uh, Felipe Munoz won the gold medal in 1968 at the Mexican Olympics. And um, I was I was very bad at school. I was a very hyperactive and I was always in trouble and getting bad grades. And my mother was always on my case. You know, make, I, don't know if it, I don't know if anywhere in the world um, mothers do the following, but my mother had this, 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 um, this, uh, uh, this saying, you know, she would go into, into her, you know, dramatic person and say, Antonio, I won't be able to inherit you anything. You don't have any, you won't have any inheritance. The only thing I'm doing is giving you the best education. And look what you're doing to me. You're not studying and you're not getting good grades. So imagine that girl that I had always in my heart. Yeah, she, yeah Christina, you can, you, can, you, you, can, you, you, can, you can cry because of that. Yeah, but my mother did that to me. And then, and then, and then uh, um, I started swimming and my life changed. I became a, 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 you know, a very good student, as a matter of fact. Um, and um, and I, I started swimming and um, I improved and I met uh, somebody who was the national coach, Nelson Vargas. And at that time, Nelson was the, he was selling Speedo suits, goggles and caps in Mexico. And that's how I get to meet Bill Lee. And, um, you know, for the old generation, Bill Lee was Mr. Speedo. He brought Speedo to the United States from Australia. Um, and um, and he, he had breakfast, lunch, and dinner Speedo. I mean, and, and everything was just Speedo. And he embodied that in me. He, he, really, he really showed me how you have to be behind your ideas. And we started doing business. And Nelson didn't speak or doesn't speak any English. So I had to communicate with Bill. And um, at the uh, second- Anton Antonio, how old are you at this age? At that age, I'm, I started doing that at 14. 14 years old. So here is a Mexican boy, 14 years old. He's an, a budding entrepreneur before he gets into high school with one of the greatest aquatic entrepreneurs in, in, aquatic, in, in world history. Bill Lee is a 
is a tremendous uh, entrepreneur. He really developed the brand of Speedo. He, he, he basically built Speedo. And this 14 year old boy is translating and conducting business at the age of 14. Then he comes to Mexico for the Pan American Games. And he, 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 we hadn't met, we just talked on the phone. And he asked me if I could get him a chauffeur. And I said, well, you know, I didn't make the team. I was an alternate. And I said, this is my chance. So I said, yes, Mr. Lee, I'll get you, I'll get, I'll get you a chauffeur. So typical Bill, he used, to like, he used to stay at the Camino Real. Camino Real at that time was the hotel in Mexico City, a very nice hotel um, made uh, by one of the Mexi best Mexican architects, Legorreta. And um, so he tells me to be there at eight o'clock. So as you know, Stephen, I'm very punctual. So that's something that the German school told me, taught me I have to be very punctual. Um, so I'm there at eight o'clock, five to eight to pick Mr. Lee. It's 8.30 and Bill Lee is not around. So he comes out in the lobby and says, ah, what are you doing here, Antonio? We had met the day before. So well, I'm gonna be your chauffeur. And I tell you one thing, Mr. Lee, it's 8.30, it's not eight o'clock. <laughs> You're 30 minutes late, okay? So he goes, well, all Mexicans are always late. I said, no, I'm not all Mexicans. I'm Antonio and I'm always punctual. So if you want me, me to be your chauffeur, you're gonna be on time. Otherwise you take a taxi, okay? So, so you know, well, I had, to, you know, I had to make a statement. I mean, otherwise it's gonna be, it's gonna be a two weeks out of a nightmare. So we go to the car and he was expecting a, you know, a big car, a limo or something like that. And in those days I drove a small v, uh, Volkswagen the Beatle. And so he is with Shirley, his wife, and, uh, and Queen, I don't know if you, but you, you must know him, Andy Burke. Yes, yes. He, Andy Burke is pretty big. big, okay? Big and big. So Andy had to ride in the back of the car and the, the, the Beatle with Shirley and, and, uh, and, uh, and Andy's uh, um, wife and Bill was in front. And, uh, and that, that's, I think that's when he, when he became, we became friends. Um, wow. And then, in and uh, I want to go and swim. I asked him that that time if he could get me a a spot with Skip Kenny or with any coach in the states to go the, for the summer next summer. And uh, Skip never came through. Uh, he talked to him, but Stephen, but uh, um, he was always busy, and I could never go. At that time, he was at uh, Skip was at Dad's Club in uh, mm -hmm. in Texas, which was a very good uh, swimming team. And so at the 76 Olympics, I didn't make the team, but I went there um, just to buy speedo goods at, in Canada and, and, and see what a new showroom. And I, that was a, the year that Speedo made the, the movie in, I don't know what the movie is, but if you can see, if we can, we should look for the movie because it's the, it's, uh, the first shot is Mike Bruner winning the 200 meter butterfly and he had his head shaved. Yeah, bald head. Yeah, all oh, head. That was, that was, I always remember that. And there was always also the time that uh, uh, Montgomery went under 50 seconds. Yes, Jim Montgomery. Jim Montgomery. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Brian Goddell won the, the 1500. And I, I, made, I made so much money in, that, in those games because we, had, we were sitting in the bleachers and uh, we were taking bets. I was taking bets <laughs> from people. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful. But you know which was the biggest bet that I won? And Antonio, you're going to ruin all of our sponsorship opportunities if you keep <laughs> divulging your secrets. <laughs> well, I haven't told everything, Quinn. I've been very careful. Okay, I haven't told. You know, Quinn and Stephen read the, the 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 first edition of the book, and they made some editorial changes. Um, oh, now I I want to remind everybody, Antonio, uh, at the 1976 Olympics. That was in Montreal. It was one of the greatest swim teams ever assembled. The American men's team won, I believe, 12 out of the 13 gold medals. They swept a lot of events. But you're still a teenager, correct? Yes. So you're a teenager. You're, you're arranging these betting pools <laughs> up in the stands. You're getting uh, Speedo gear from all of your contacts in order to sell into Mexico, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just want but to make. You haven't, you haven't heard the best part, but let me follow, let me just tell you. But what's also the well? Remember John? Do you remember John Neighbor getting the medal in in the two hundred? Yeah. He was he was a thing in late eight, 
and the furnaces. I mean, they, they had some great swims and Godel swimming, I guess, was uh, 15, 16 or 15, 14, yeah. something like that, you know, coming into the one minute, um, obviously the 100 meter freestyle. But the biggest bet was, remember, the, the women yeah. didn't win any medals. Yeah. The East Germans won everything. And so here comes the relay, okay? And everybody's sure the Germans are going to win it. And I just had this gut feeling that they were, the, the, the girls were going to come in and do an incredible swim. So I took all the bets. You know, it was, it was a big bet. So imagine how much I won. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful. Uh, you know, later I met Kim Payton at Stanford. Oh, okay. And, and I, I, the first time I met her, I said, Kim, you, please, I know you don't know me. It's the first time. You know, I live with Billy, so you can, you, you, you know, I know you will think I'm a very respectable person. Let me give you a hug because of you, I made a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but the, the, no, the best part is that since Bill was doing the film, Peter was doing the film, he got tickets. So he told me, Antonio, I have three sets of tickets for all the, for, for all the whole swimming, imagine. And I know you have friends and you, I know, you know, there's some coaches here you do business with. So why don't you share them with them? I wow. said, oh, Mr. Lee, thank you very much. Antonio, promise me you're not going to scalp them. <laughs> no, Mr. Lee, I would never do that. I would never do that. I won't tell you how much I got for the, for the day of the 100 meter freestyle. Oh, that was so beautiful. <laughs> okay, so, uh, now you, you've gone to the Olympics. You've made a lot of money, but more importantly, you've made a lot of contacts. At this time, you're staying in Los Altos uh, High School or Gun High School. Where, where no, were you? No, you know what happened? The most important thing about that trip is that I asked Bill Lee if he could find me a coach for next summer because Skip hadn't done that. And out of the blue, out of the blue, he says, Antonio, I want you to come and live with us in Palo Alto. Wow. In Los Altos. Yeah. So I came back to Mexico and I told my parents, I'm going to go and live in Los Altos and I'm going to go and finish high school there. So um, they had basically, Bill and Shirley adopted me. In, you know, my book, The Forever Swim, um, it's, uh, I wrote it for them uh, because they were so generous with me. And um, but talking about water polo, I go to, to my first day in California is uh, the first day in school. I arrive on a Friday and had to go to to, to, the, to the high school, Los Altos High School. And, um, and everybody assumed since I was a swimmer that I could play water polo. So I arrived at the pool. John Felix was the, 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 the math teacher and the, the water polo coach and swimming coach. Um, and I, can hold, I can't hold the ball. I mean, it's, it, and it's all foggy and, and it was terrible. It was miserable, miserable. And um, finally, you know, when I knew I really spoke English better is when I could play water polo, listen to everything that people were saying and swear in English. At that moment, I said, I know how to speak English. I'm, 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 now I'm fluent. Now I can do it. <laughs> and, uh, and I finished high school there. And then I went to Stanford and, um, and you know, I guess I'm, on, I'm probably I'm one of the few people at NCAA Division I to be ever lapped in a 1650. Very depressing, very depressing, very depressing. Um, and uh, that day, well, that day, it was a Saturday. And then on Tuesday and on the Wednesday, we were at a workout. And in my lane, um, I, I was the number one in the women's lane. And behind me were Joe Harshbarger Clark, world record in the 1500 meter freestyle, Kim Payton and Valerie Lee. And those three made my day every single day, morning and afternoon. I had to be the one in front and they were just dragging on me all the time. And I, I was able to do that for a couple, of, you know, a couple of weeks or two months. And that day, I just couldn't do it. You know, I had to do 10 800s. Yeah. 10, I remember 10 800. So by 800, number four, they were pissed because I wasn't going as fast as they wanted. <laughs> number five, Kim Payton started putting my, my feet. I mean, the worst thing they can do is you know, talk yeah. to your feet. So I said, well, go in front of me. I said, no, you keep on going. I said, no. I said, yeah, you have to do it. I said, no, I'm getting out of the pool. I'm quitting today. I got out of the pool, went to Jim Gordon, thank him because you know, he had taken me. Um, and that's my, the end of my um, competitive days. Wow, I didn't know that. But, yeah. 
But then, okay, so you graduated from Stanford, but then you got back into uh, aquatics in, in some way when you brought triathlon to Mexico, is that correct? Yes, at that time triathlon was in the 80s, triathlon was um, developing and Carl Thomas, um, vice president of Speedo was very involved in, in triathlon. And so he told me, why don't you start triathlon in Mexico and help develop triathlon in Latin America? So I did that. I founded the Mexican Triathlon Federation and we founded a company, which is all today. Um, it's like active.com is the, the largest organizer of, of uh, sports events in Mexico. It's called As Deporte. And, um, and I'm the honorary president of the Mexican uh, Triathlon Federation. And I did many triathlons and I did, uh, I, I've done five Ironmans and run 10 marathons. But when I turned 40, um, I injured, I, 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 not 40, about 38, I injured my leg and I couldn't do anything anymore. Um, I couldn't run anymore. It was very painful. And somebody suggested that I do, and I want to go to Everest. So I started training for Everest and, and I had a, 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 a it was a mutiny in my house because my children and my wife just got on my case because they were sure I was going to die in Everest. So I had to find something else. And that's when I, and when I turned 40, I sw started swimming again. And um, that year uh, in 1999, I finished the triple crown. Um, for, some, for many years, I was the seventh person to have done it, but I don't know how somehow now I'm the eighth person to have done it. Um, you know, the statistics, you know, uh, change, but that's, that doesn't matter. And, um, and then when I turned 50, um, I did the Triple Crown in one season and became the second person to do it uh, two times. And um, that was in, uh, in 19, in 2009. Yeah, it was 2009. And um, I got the National Prize Award for, for, for Sports Award in Mexico. And I was sure... I was finished with swimming. And I started training for the Everest. And this time my children and Lucia, Jimena and David told me, if you wanna die, go ahead, dad. I mean, you know, you're, you're old enough to do whatever you want. Just don't bother us. And um, I started training and I broke my leg. Um, I, blo I broke my femur 25 centimeters. Uh. And, um, and I was in bed. And you had come out. When did you come out with Ocean 7? 2000, um, I'm trying to remember now, 2010 or so. So one day I'm recovering in the pool and a friend of mine, Patty Coleman. I'm sorry? Sophie says they have a like to joke until with me. early February. Okay. And, and, and she comes to me and said, God, Antonio, you are too old. I mean, you look really bad. And um, let me tell you, there's something new it's called Ocean 7. <laughs> and you're not going to be the, me the first Mexican to achieve it. So how come? No, no, look at you. I mean, you just, you know, you're just all over. All, it's all over for you. And, and uh, you know, I was 54 or 55 at the time. So I went home and look up, I look up uh, uh, at the open, the daily, no, the, the daily news of open water swimming. And I found what Ocean 7 was. I found that I had two. And I said, well, I'm gonna run two marathons. If I run two marathons, then I will be sure I'm ready for Ocean 7. So I did two marathons. Um, the time I wanted to do was six minutes per kilometer. I did that in Chicago. And then I started in 215 with uh, Gibraltar, um, trying to achieve uh, Ocean 7 and um, and so you were, you're about 52 at this age, 53? No, when I started Ocean 7, I was 55. 55, okay. So in 215, I, I started Gibraltar. And this is a funny story. And, and I see that uh, Ned is, uh, is, uh, has joined us. Um, and, um, you know, I, you, you had... Um, I you say you had to, um, proposed me or um, for the swimming hall of fame, and it had been many years. And, in, and every year I said, "Well, I get I get news this year," and I never got news. So when I started doing Gibraltar, that was in two fifteen, and then at the end of the year, somebody calls me and I said, "Antonio, 
you know, I, I didn't get a message. I, I, somebody read it in the daily news of open water swimming that I was, uh, I was inducted into the Swimming Hall of Fame. So somebody called me, is this fake news? I mean, are, are you trying to, you know, what are you trying to do? And uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's what happened. Um, yeah. And, uh, and what, the first time I got the, the man, man of the year was, I was what, 215 or two, yeah, 2015. 2015. And I guess it was because of the Tsugaru swim. Yeah, it was a Tsugaru swim, which was very difficult. Yes. And, and, and uh, Quinn, you want me to tell the story of how I, you know, what happened is how, you know, how did I get the voting? So this is, a, this is something that is <laughs> Well, yeah, because it'll explain why we've added so many security protocols to <laughs> our current... <laughs> no, 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 there were security <laughs> protocols at that time. No, 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 that's let, not let the me, case. Let me that explain this. So we started uh, the uh, WOWS Awards in 2008. Reason why is in 2005, the International Olympic Committee uh, accepted marathon swimming or a 10K race in the Olympics. In 2005, we didn't even, there was, there was very few rules uh, other than the English Channel and a few rules at, at FINA. Um, open water swimmers other than Lynn Cox and uh, a few other people were not well known. And certainly nobody knew who the favorites were for the 2008 Olympic 10K marathon swim. So uh, Wowza was created in order to uh, educate everybody around the world, coaches, athletes, uh, administrators, the press, um, who were the best and fastest marathon swimmers in the world. But you can't, because we, we didn't really have many awards in the sport, we couldn't say he or she is the best swimmer. So the WOWS Awards were created in order to help people understand who were the heroes and who were the heroines of the sport. And so the best way to do that, I thought, was to allow everybody to vote or anybody to vote. Um, and so uh, the, some of the early winners are, are uh, Peter Stoichev, um, who's gone on to do many things, including setting the English Channel um, crossing record, um, Pollyanna Okimoto, who got a bronze medal in the last Olympics in the, in the marathon swim. She and uh, uh, Mr. Stoichev, they were both pool swimmers, very much like Antonio, focused pool swimmers, but their, uh, their real skill and talent lied in the open water. And so 2008, when we first started open water, I'm sorry, the WOWS Awards, people were voting online. Um, but some people were getting a million or two million votes. And I, I didn't understand how could this, I knew the sport was growing, but it wasn't growing that uh, much. And I realized that uh, the internet online voting, you could create bots and different ways to get around our, our system. And, and so um, what we have nowadays is um, openwaterswimming.com, you go there, you can vote once on your, or your computer and the system tracks you. It's tracked by your computer and your email. And that way we can truly, or as close as we can have one vote per person. And that's the way we want it. Um, and Antonio, you've, you know, uh, not only do people know you because of your um, swims but they know you because of the books you've written, the speeches you've given, the television, um, all the television programs you've been on. And, and so that is why we uh, select these kind of people to be nominees. And for us, you know, the winner is, is always a great uh, person, but it's really the nominees and, and allowing people from around the world to understand who are some of the greatest um, open water swimmers of the world. And it's not, again, it's not for the fastest. It's not for you know, the person with the best stroke is people who make an impact. And, and what you've heard in this last, uh, I don't know, half an hour or so is how Antonio has made an impact on people. Now he's told you what he's done. And, uh, you know, at the age of 14, he's dealing, he's making business deals with the Speedo 
uh, uh, president. At 18, he's up in the stands at the Olympics uh, doing deals, making money, um, obtaining equipment. But in this next half, I'd like to ask Antonio and open it up for questions on why? Why, Antonio, do you do what you do? At the age of 14, you're dealing with an American businessman. At the age of 18, you're up at the stands making all kinds of deals. At the age of your 20s, you're bringing a triathlon to uh, the country of Mexico. At the age of 55, you start uh, you know, the Ocean 7. Why, is, why do you do all these things? Hyperactive. No, that, that's the truth. I mean, no, you know what happened? I started my business because my father lost his job. And, um, and uh, we were going to a private school. And um, so my mother, my mother always worked. I have this anecdote that some, one day, we, I used to go to a German school, which is a private school here in Mexico. Um, and um, it was expensive. And... Uh, one of my friends came, to, two of my friends came to my house and they, 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 the next day at school, they asked me, you guys are poor. And I said, what do you mean? Yeah, you don't have a television in your house. My father was convinced that uh, we, we shouldn't watch TV and your mother has to work. This is the 60s and uh, women in Mexico were not supposed to be working. And my mother is a veterinarian. She's a 13th 13th veterinarian in Mexico. And she was a researcher at the National University. And so when my dad um, uh, loses his job, she has to leave um, her, teaching, her teaching position and her uh, research and uh, you know, just try to do things. She, she was, she's also very imaginative. We're still in business at 85. We still, her and I have a business. And so I have to start working to, to help her. And uh, that's, you know, I, I, I guess it was just out of necessity that, uh, that I started working and, and, and trying to make, a, you know, help her with, the, with tuition. And I never, never, never thought that it would take me so long, uh, so far, um, because that, that what I learned at 14, how to sell, has always been um, very, very important in my life. And what I keep on doing it is, that I've told you several times is, but, but let me, I, one thing I want to say, uh, Stephen, is that um, when I think about the Woza words, what I like the best is um, what you say about the, the people who are nominated are people who have an impact in the communities. Um, and, uh, and we're seeing it this year. Um, you know, I know very well uh, Marielle. You know, she's not only a very good swimmer, but she has a foundation. And she helps children with uh, with uh, uh, with, um, with the lips that are not correct. But but when I finished Ocean Seven, and this is how I won the second time, I made a promise to myself that I was going to go to every single public school that they asked me to go and give a speech. And for the last uh, two or three years, I've gone I don't know how many times um, to high schools, especially high schools, because that's a it's a very complicated time for, 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 for teenagers when they have to decide and have to see that life is not easy. And, and, and when you're in the open water swimming, when you're crossing a channel um, and somebody asks a question, which is the, the hardest, obviously, Ned mentioned it, probably in the North Channel. I mean, swimming in the North Channel at 13 or 13, 14 degrees Celsius for 13, 14 hours, it's, um, it's very tiring and very complicated. But, uh, but I do, I keep on swimming I enjoy it because it helps me with my hyperactivity and because uh, allows me to do these kinds of things. Allows me to tell stories. Last week, we told a story uh, uh, about my friends, uh, the Marina, the, the CEO, uh, Don Julian, the parrot, my dragon. Today, my dragon was very important. My dragon kept me going because he gave me heat in the pool. At that 13 degrees Celsius that you say, they, uh, uh, Stephen, I will tell that to, 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 to Rafa, because when Rafa wasn't here today, that it was not 15, it was 13 degrees. Yeah. Um, that's why I keep on swimming. It's, uh, it, it brings, uh, what's the Japanese word, Stephen? Ikigai. It's my ikigai. 
Yeah. Like, Ikigai means uh, a passion for living or your purpose for living. That's what it is. That's my purpose of living. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if um, anybody has questions for Antonio, uh, please uh, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, or raise your hand and ask a question. Even while we while we wait for questions, um, I wanted to acknowledge someone on the call, our uh, developer who made our beautiful new website and set up our Wowza Awards uh, this year. Tima has done an amazing job and has worked incredibly hard. In particular, this past week, we couldn't we couldn't have been luckier to find her. So I just wanted to say public thank you to Tima. Thank you very much. Congratulations! I'm Congratulations! Yeah. I'm going to share the screen so people can see um, what the uh, website looks like. And it, here it is. Um, you just go to openwaterswimming.com. Uh, and at the top, you can vote for the offering of the year, uh, performance of the year, woman of the year, and man of the year. Uh, each of these, you can simply click and go directly to the voting. And we have, uh, this year was a very unusual year, obviously with the, the COVID-19 virus. So we had a lot of swimmers who were very, very creative. There were books, there were events, there were seminars, there were swim uh, vacations, there were apps, uh, there were documentary films, there was new kinds of, of competitions or uh, solo swim opportunities. Um, it was really, really a creative year uh, for the, uh, the community. Um, you also have the uh, performance of the year. And the performance of the year um, had some really, really incredible people. Some of them were relay swims, some of them were solo swims. Some of them were a triathlon of 76 hours, I think, or 70 hours. Um, some of them were ice swims. Uh, some of them were uh, record-breaking uh, channel swims. Uh, the Women of the Year, Women of the Year, uh, was another group of 12 absolutely unbelievable women. Um, they come from uh, Chile, uh, Russia, Mexico, uh, Wales, the Netherlands, Brazil, Canada, the United States, Sweden, another uh, individual from the United States, Australia, and uh, St. Kitts in the Caribbean. The uh, Man of the Year includes individuals from uh, Tunisia, Romania, Mexico, Brazil, the UK, Germany, South Africa, Hong Kong, the US, uh, two brothers from the US, uh, 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 Estonia and Italy. And so, um, you know, when you have a, a chance, just come to openwaterswimming.com and you can vote on all these. Plus you can see uh, literally 20,000 articles on the sport. Um, that cover a variety of things. Um, so I'll stop sharing. And Antonio won this award, Man of the Year, on 2015 and 2017. Um, so anyway, if anybody has any uh, specific questions or general comments, uh, just unmute yourself and uh, ask away. Uh, hello, I have a question. Uh, I'm from Turkey, Güneş Kibar. Um, yeah, my team also nominee in the performance of the year. And I'm, I'm really happy to listen your incredible story. It's, it's just also have some influential uh, topics inside of it. I just wonder what's your next uh, next aim because you still have a dragon inside and it has fire as I can see from your talk, from your, from your separate. So what's, what's your next step? Well, first I have to, I, I want to accomplish um, 
the double crossing of the English Channel. And that's going to be between July 31st and August 7th. Um, and Ned Dennison asked me if I'm going to be doing 25 kilometers still at 870. Ned, you know, my goal, now my grandfather, my goal is that one day one of my grandchildren swims with me tandem from Catalina to the mainland. And that's oh. going to probably happen when I'm at 80, 85. So, uh, um, you know, I'll be around. I'll be around. So uh, I, I hope, uh, you know, after I do, I hope uh, first I have to finish the English Channel back and forth. Then Lucia cannot hear me because she's in the other room. I will keep on swimming. <laughs> okay, but uh, that's, a, that's a secret. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, I also can invite you our new road. I mean, if you want. Uh, we, we are trying to make a new road between Turkey and Cyprus. And um, I mean, if you want, I want, I would like to invite you. Oh, well, I will go. You know, you know, we were in Istanbul. Um, yeah, and, I know, the Bosporus. Uh, my friend Helen. Yeah, I, we, we did, I didn't swim it, but I went with Lucia um, and we did a, a, a whole trip in, in Turkey. And I'm sure she would like that one. That that's a good one. Yeah. If I say I'm going to Turkey again, she will buy. She will say yes. We'll we'll go there. We'll go there. Yeah. yeah okay. Then I'm I I would like to watch you. I mean, if if the COVID situation is just uh, getting over with the vaccine, I hope next year. I hope if you have a yeah. timeline. So send me. I, I will put my email. Um, send okay. me an email with the information. I'll put it in my email in uh, in the chat room. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's my well, just offer. Thank you. And for nice the to meet you, everyone. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. Um, Antonio, there's another uh, question in the chat room. Uh, you talk about the Ocean 7, and that's a, a crossing of the English Channel, Catalina Channel, North Channel, Strait of Gibraltar, Cook Strait, Molokai Channel, and the Tsuguru Channel in Japan all very different, all very um, uh, difficult, but which one was your most difficult one? The most yeah, difficult? That's, that's also my question. <laughs> I mean, because my team, we, we tried already English Channel, we passed, and then we tried to make our roads. And uh, I, I want to make my team as a university team to, to go on this seven ocean. So I just, would, I, I would like to know which one is the hardest. For, well, you, the hardest, for your experience. The, the hardest without question for me was the North Channel. You know, being, being you know, living in Mexico where you don't have, well, now I have cold water, but I didn't have cold water before. A pool, you know, my own pool, a 50 meter, 60 degrees, Stevens, Stevens temperature. Now I have, you know, it's fake news. My watch is fake news. Stevens is the one who knows how, how cold the water. That's difficult. And the other one that's very complicated it's uh, Molokai. Molokai is the, lo the farthest, and, um, and and Stephen says it very well. Stephen says that you know the two hardest of the Ocean Seven is the coldest and the warmest. Um, and uh, and Molokai was a pain for me. Twenty three hours and eighteen minutes. Um, it was difficult. It was difficult. Yeah, uh, Antonio, I love the how you describe your Molokai Channel swim. Again, on paper you should have finished that much quicker. Can you uh, explain your Molokai channel swim to everybody? Yeah. The first lesson I learned is that you never, never should come into a swim predicting a time. That's a no-no, okay? So we go to Molokai, um, Ocean 7, I've done Gibraltar, I've done uh, Sugaru, and Nora, my coach at the time says, what, is, what are we aiming at? I said 14, 15 hours. So I start swimming. Once I get out of the bay, the wind hits really bad. The waves, two meters, two meters and a half. I can't see the kayak. I can, obviously, I can see the boat. So at night, at three o'clock in the morning, I approach the boat and I ask Nora, how are we doing? How far have we gone? And she says, we're not even 50% there. So imagine I'm 10 hours in the water, not even 50%. She 
So I started self, having a, a lot of self-doubt. And, and that was probably one of my toughest swims mentally because, you know, here I am, 57 years old. My longest swim was when I was 40, which was the English Channel, 18 hours and 19 minutes. And I will have to swim at least 20 hours or more. So I, I kept on swimming half an hour, half an hour. And when I get to the 18th hour and 19 minutes, I said, two things are going to happen. Are they gonna, I'm going to turn into a pumpkin, like in, in, in the movies, because you know, it's at 12 o'clock, now I'm going to turn into a pumpkin, or I have to do something. And, and it was really, it's really beautiful how your mind works. Because instead of thinking that I will have to go up to 24 hours, I realized that if I got out there at that moment, they weren't going to drop me the next time there. I would have to start from there and back there. And I said, well, what's five, six hours? Five, six hours is uh, Ned Denison's uh, weekend workout. So if Ned, can, if Ned can swim six hours on a weekend, you know, I can do that too. So I, instead of thinking I'm going to swim 24 hours, I thought I had to swim five or six hours. And I finished in 23 hours and 18 minutes. And that was a tough one. That was a tough one. Yeah. And it was because of currents in addition or big waves or all of that. You, I think oh, you got stung. Also. Everything. <laughs> You know, remember when we, when we talked about the pilots, yeah. the pilot said, and then at that day, Antonio had all the wrong things, waves, wind, currents. I mean, it was awful, 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 awful. Yeah. But, uh, but um, you know, I always say that when people ask me, what do I think in those moments? And I'm sure many of you think the same way. If you get out of the water and you go home, you will have to explain to everybody why you failed. And you can make all the excuses you want. I mean, we failed, okay? So it was the, the, the first one is the captain didn't, the captain didn't know. I see the captain wouldn't know how to, what to do. Nobody says it's because I failed. So you have to explain, explain, explain. So I, I'm, I'm, of a, I'm of a generation where my friends are bullies. And I'm a bully too, but they're, very, they're worse than I. So just imagine my whole life having to deal with my friends every time I sat down. Ah, you couldn't finish. Remember when you couldn't finish? So when, I, when that happens, I just think, I don't want to give you an explanation. I just finish. And nobody asked me why I finish. I never asked me why I do things. You know, but if I had failed, that would have been very bad. So I try not to fail. Yeah. yeah. We, have a, we have another question from Mark Dempsey, which is very important, Antonio, um, because you and Rafa you do a lot of different dry land training. Um, and, and Mark's question is, he's, he's coaching a, a first time English channel a swimmer, um, but obviously their pools are closed and he wants to know if using a rowing machine is good for a training tool. And Antonio, yes. my question to you is, you do a lot of different things on dry land in order to help you prepare for uh, these long swims what are those i do three things basically one i have a a rafa design a um, a uh, a strength program with weights um but very specific to to swimming um and uh and we do that two times a week it takes about 50 minutes 55 minutes then I have another set of, of uh, exercises that have to do with my body. You know, I have to do planks and I have to do different things that everything is just using my body to do all the, uh, all the movements. And, um, and that's hard. I mean, that, you know, being the way that I, the, the, the amount of weight that I have, I have to, but that has given me a lot of strength. And the rowing machine, we use them sometimes when we don't want to use the, the, the bicycle or the step, the, 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 the treadmill, we, we do rowing and rowing is very good. Um, I would say Mark, rowing is a good, it's a good tool for your, for your, for your swimmers, but put them on also on strength and, and body strength, you know, using their body, both things with weights and with their body. And that has been a big difference in my life. Totally big difference. Yeah. And I want to, um, I'm going to put, uh, uh, Ned Dennison on the spot here. Uh, Ned runs a, a very fantastic um, uh, marathon and channel swimming 
um, camp uh, in his part of the world in Cork, Ireland. But Ned, you know, you've been a, you were an all-American water polo player and then you, you became a, an accomplished um, prison island channel swimmer, a channel swimmer, a marathon swimming. How do you incorporate or how do, what do you recommend on the dry land training side? When I was younger, um, somebody asked me about stretching. And this is back a few years ago. I don't do this kind of stretching anymore. And I said, um, I, I stretch a little bit, but I never put the ice cream too far in the freezer. So I, I literally, Steve, I do nothing but swimming. Got it. And I, I set the goal each year to do a million or, or more meters in the year. So when I do that, when I then get in the water, I have the mental and physical confidence that I think I can do the swim. Now, some people can do 200,000 meters in a year and they have the confidence. Some people need two and a half million meters a year for the confidence. Other people need to go to a psychiatrist to do five million sit-ups and bench presses and Pilates and running and cycling. So I think each, each person is different depending on the, 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 the time of their life um, and their experience. And I think what Antonio will, will nod his head about, and Steve, you, you'll nod your head as well, is we have something called big swim memory. So you're swimming along, swimming along, swimming along, and shit happens at eight hours. The UFO lands, the, the river dries, the, the piranhas come out, the, the airplane lands in the Hudson, and you go, yeah, seen that before. Okay, yep, just get on with it. Yep, been there, done that. So when Antonio talks about being in a swim and it all goes wrong, he dials back and he goes, yeah, this happened before. And I had to do the following things. I had to think about my friends and I didn't want to explain it. Um, and how much I paid and my wife didn't want me to go. So, so the answer to Mark is that for your swimmer, you're, you're now in, in Limerick, Ireland or wherever they are. The pools are probably closed. The water is chilly. It's really hard to get the meters in. But I'm, I'm out there, Mark, doing a lap of the island every day. And each day I'm falling a little behind on my meter target. But the first time the, the water gets warmer, it's two laps, then three laps, then four laps. And I'll, I'll reel in my target. It was 1.9 this morning in the river. So 1.9 yeah. degrees Celsius? Um, yeah. Oh my god! Oh, that's cold. Oh. And, uh, and I, this, I this, cut my this... arm here after hitting a slice. Uh, I hit a slice. Uh, I sliced my arm with a thing of ice. So, but um, yes, it was. And Mark's only allowed to travel five kilometers from his home to train. It's a new restriction. So yeah. you have to train in what you have. We had a guy last year, Mark. The the only thing he had was a small creek, and there's only one place deep in it. So he 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 bought a wetsuit. He tied a rope to himself and a tree, and he swam for 45 minutes every day in the same 0.75 deep bit of creek. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's Mark Hannigan, Ned, you know, so you know Mark. Yeah, yeah. I know Mark well. So, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I, oh, well. I, you, may, you asked me a question while my drills in the open water. I have three. One is to go for 30 minutes just at my cruising space, at my cruising speed, then do 30 minutes changing speeds um, every two or three minutes. You know, I go fast, lower, and then lower. And then another one that I like a lot is um, 30 minutes with mental training. Um, imagining, you know, I do something called Qigong that I do on, on dry land. And I do, I do that mentally, and that relaxes me a lot. So when I'm, when I'm swimming 24 hours, those three elements help me break, you know, the amount of time that you're swimming at the same pace. So we use it, Rafa and I use it depending on how I'm feeling during the, the, the during the swim. Yeah. Um, I, I'll, I think Quinn wanted to mention, um, uh, we have uh, several coaches 
who actually uh, input specialty workouts on openwaterswimming.com. So you can, uh, you can look at that uh, at your convenience. It's a, it's a feature we're in the process of building right now, but very shortly coaches will be able to um, enter training plans and people can sign up to follow them. So be on the lookout. Yeah. And then uh, there was another question about nutrition. Uh, nutrition is, is, um, is interesting topic. And, and I say that because uh, when there is an international competition, the Olympics or the uh, world championships, uh, it's absolutely fascinating to look at what all the athletes do. You have the, the Japanese who swear by their Japanese rice. You have um, uh, other people who swear by, you know, I need to have a, a steak. Other people who need to have a pasta with a special sauce. Others will have a special drink um, and they will swear by that special drink. And Antonio and Ned uh, know quite well, you know, uh, all channel swimmers have already dialed in their uh, specific nutrition, their hydration, et cetera. The best ones always have practiced many, many times before. You never want to do anything new on a swim. And uh, Antonio and Ned, if you wanted to jump in and, and add to that. I, um, I hate porridge. I hate porridge. But before a long, cold swim, I have a big bowl of porridge. I believe it sits in your belly and radiates heat for hours. And after I've eaten that shit, I'm not getting out because I hate porridge. My, mine is simpler. Um, I, I try to eat a little bit of fruit and coffee before my swim. And once I finish my workout in the next five minutes, I eat another portion of food and I eat a scoop of, um, of, uh, of protein. Um, so that has helped me a lot. This season, I've changed that. That has helped me a lot. And um, my, my, my lunch is usual, uh, an Antonio lunch, and I won't describe it this time because you guys will go hungry. Um, and at dinner, I changed my dinner. Now my dinner is just uh, um, a grapefruit, you know, a complete grapefruit, and then some slices of, uh, of uh, um, ham and a little bit of cheese and, and, and some bread. Um, I still keep on drinking my tequila, my, my Corona, and my... Um, and my uh, uh, bottle of wine, I mean, those are essentials for, for any survival um, in, in, in the open water. And, um, and um, you know, when we, get, when we get to Dover, I'll have a surprise for you. I hopefully I'll be have a surprise about nutrition when I get to Dover. I'm working on that. And uh, when, I, when I train, like today, I had uh, axel gel. I, if, when I swim or when I train a long training, I eat an axel gel in the pool every, every hour. And when I'm doing a channel swim every half hour. Got it. Um, Ned, I like um, your description. Was it of chicken soup? Um, yeah. it, it tastes the same going in and out. Yeah, I, I think um, every, everybody has a comfort food. And for people from uh, Ireland or Great Britain, it's tea. And it's a kind of tea their mother made for them when they were five and six and seven years old and they weren't feeling well. It usually has a lot of milk and sugar. And when they're really, really low, their crew gives them the tea their mother used to give them when they weren't feeling well. And it, and it perks them up completely. But for me, it's, it's chicken soup because when you throw it back up, there's a clear, clear broth. There's no little noodles or bits of chunks. It comes up the same way. It just tastes great both ways. Yeah, but you know what? You know one thing about throwing up when you're swimming, um, Ned, or having you know the, the liquids come up. One thing I found is that the acid stabilizes your 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 mouth. This is really gross, but the acid stabilizes your 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 mouth and also your um, you know here in the middle of uh, you know I didn't call it here. Um, and, um, and that, that has been very helpful. That has been very helpful. It's, it's not a problem to throw up. It's not a problem to throw up once an hour for two, three hours. That's not a problem. If, if 
you can still manage to drink some fluid because if you throw up for too many hours in a row and you don't replenish, you get dehydrated and that's it, it's over. You never recover. Thank, thank you much, uh, very much, everybody. Um, we're gonna we're call it a, a day after an hour of a very entertaining and educational uh, talk. And we'll see you here next week at Diary of a Double, week 21. All right. No, 22. 22, 22, sorry. 22. And we'll be, we'll, I will be, sorry, but I'll be transmitting directly from Acapulco, Mexico. Oh. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you. <laughs> Rub it in, Antonio. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Great seeing you. Hey, bye bye. Ciao. The same, place, the same place where Johnny Weismiller used to train, right? Exactly. <laughs> See right. you guys. Bye.